Hello and welcome to Kinship Earth Connections. My name is Lauren Archer and I'm the Executive Director at Kinship Earth. The video you're about to see was recorded live on April 16th, 2022. It is our inaugural networking event, so you'll hear a little bit of background about Kinship Earth as we introduce our Board of Directors and our Advisory Board. And today's special guest is Stuart Valentine. So this was a live Zoom event so please feel free to join us as if you are in the room and we hope to have you join us at an upcoming event it's been my great honor and privilege to get to know the amazing susan davis mora the founder of kins innovation networks who has been largely the attractor field that's drawn us all here together today as well as the rest of the team and so um I'm going to be introducing each of our board of directors and our advisory board today. And they're gonna share a little bit of background, um, just a taste of how we got to where we are here today and a little bit about the infrastructure we are building and our plans for the future and what that might mean for you. And I'm also going to introduce our featured influencer, Stuart Valentine. He is the uh, CEO and uh, founder of co-founder of Centered Wealth, and he's got a fabulous presentation that he's going to share all about uh, how principles of consciousness, conscious evolution is the driving force and how we can impact change. So as we get going today, I'm going to invite you to get a sense of where we are. So Kins Networks function in multiple spheres of influence, and we are expanding those spheres. So if you would like, go ahead and type in the chat what you are primarily attracted to, drawn to? What is your sphere of influence? Are you in spirituality and service? Are you in economics, finance, and business? One of the others. Um, maybe it's not something on this chart, but we're, we're weaving our networks together and we've got some amazing plans for how we can do that. The purpose of the Kinship Earth Connections event series is to cross-pollinate information, innovation and impact across these multiple, multiple spheres of influence so that we can co-create solutions, share best practices and amplify our regenerative influence. The session flow for today is basically as follows. We're gonna start with some introductions and a little inspiration. We imagine that taking about 20 minutes and then we're gonna Toss it over to Stuart, who's going to give us about a 20 minute presentation, give us an update on what he's doing with Centered Wealth and put that in perspective with the KINS initiative. And then our, our big goal is to be able to hear from you. We want to open up everybody's microphones and have an opportunity to share our reflections, to engage in conversation, have some Q&A. So we're going to devote as much time as we can for that. And we're going to do the best we can in terms of giving people an opportunity to lend their voice to the room. And in lieu of having the time to do that, we're also going to use the chat and we've got some exciting announcements for the future on how we can better stay connected. And then at the end, um, I'm going to invite you right now, put your thinking cap on, be scanning for your key takeaways. What is the one or two, uh, what are the one or two key points that you want to take away from today's session? And if you have any closing affirmations or intentions, we want to be able to give voice to that as well. Now I want to take a moment for some inspiration. Let's take a breath. Let's settle in. Remember who you are and why you're here and that we are part of a living system and we are emerging into a next level of evolution. And those of us who are drawn here today are inspired by the Kins principles originally designed by Susan Davis Mora, adopted by hundreds of people in more than 40 networks across the globe. First principle is our strategy is generosity and our intention 
is wonder. The next principle is a deal is a good deal, or you can think of it as an agreement is a good agreement when it is good for all stakeholders, especially Earth. The next principle is that we each do what we love to do and do well and little else. So as we each contribute from that space of love and generosity, that impacts our ripple effect in the community. And we sit at the table of unknowing and invite the universe or spirit or God, however you refer to that invisible consciousness, to co-create with us for the highest good of all concerned. So those are the first four KINS principles. You can read the rest of them in the KINS Network guidebook or in Susan's book, The Trojan Horse of Love, which are your gifts for joining us today. And next, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna stop my screen share in a moment. And actually I'm going to, let's see if I can spotlight Susan here. Uh, spotlight. There we go. Uh, I'd like to introduce Susan Davis Mora, who has been named the godmother of social investing. She is the founder of Kins Innovation Networks, author of The Trojan Horse of Love. And Susan, thank you so much for being the big attractor field that has uh, inspired so many and drawn us here today. Please give us a little bit of background on Kins and where we are going and what, what you're up to right now. Oh my goodness, first of all, thank you, Lauren. You're a gift from heaven and uh, I can never thank you enough for bringing all of this back to all of us. So uh, it's very emotional because you're, you've brought Kins back to life in a way that all the members of each of the Kins can uh, connect with each other and go forward from here in a tidal wave. Uh, it's beyond uh, belief and uh, beyond what I could have imagined. So from my whole heart, Lauren, thank you. I am supporting you all the way. Whatever you ask me to do, as you know, I say yes in advance. So we can keep that going. And uh, the, the whole idea of thinking that you can uh, gift all of the members of each network to each other is, uh, is the way we need to think from here on because we are gifted to each other. There's nothing we can't do. We have expertise in all the different areas we need. And we are all uh, inspired by God and each other. And uh, that's what it's going to be. So uh, my husband, Walter, is with us. Uh, we've been working together for 20 years. And he's been doing kids very much. So Walter, uh, please put your voice in the room, dear. Good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to be here with all of you. Um, I got to know Susan about 22 years ago when I lived in Wisconsin. I had my dairy farm there. I was farming biodynamically and Susan lived around the corner. We got to know each other. And uh, one evening we went, this was in February when it was very cold and snowing. We went up to Milwaukee and on the way back, um, we were talking about the farm. It was about an hour's drive. And uh, Susan, you know, being a finance person said, well, do you do budgets? And I said, yeah, I do budgets. And he said, did you do, you know, because of the drought, I was losing money that year. He said, did you do a budget for the drought? And I said, no. And she said, why not? I said, well, that would show that, you know, in a business sense, I, I was going to lose money and I should sell the farm. And she sort of looked at me, you know, shook her shoulders and said, yeah, well, Susan, you got to realize I'm into agriculture, not into agribusiness. And uh, uh, she didn't have anything to say for that. Can you imagine Susan being speechless for a few minutes? And, um, you know, I think that's what we're trying to do with, with Kinship Earth and on our farm. We're trying to cultivate a new culture. And um, that... You know, times are so really difficult right now, and um, it's, we're trying to create the new future. And we're also doing that on Finca Sagrada down here uh, in the southern part of Ecuador. We have this beautiful farm, and uh, 
our mission statement is we are creating a multicultural community, farm-based community that helps people reconnect to self, community, and the earth in a heartfelt way. And I think we can really, uh, people who visit our farm really experience that. It's a sacred site. And uh, yeah, so that's very exciting. It's been a great way for Susan and I to, to work together, her with her uh, finance background and her people skills and me more with, uh, you know, working with the earth and stewarding the earth in a, in a good way. So I just wanted to share that with you folks. Beautiful. And I just put some images on the screen of Finca Sagrada. Please check out the website. It is uh, has been designated as a sacred site by the Kogi elders. Susan and Walter have been down there for 14 years, uh, regenerating the farm. And we are poised at the threshold of enabling them to take that farm and their vision to the next level by having it be one of the um, uh, an Echo Village regeneration pilot program. So it's way beyond the scope of what we have time to get into today, but please join us at on uh, May 10th when we're gonna be getting into much more detail about what they're doing down there. So anything else, uh, Susan and Walter, you'd like to share before I pass it to Stephen? Uh, if any of you looking for a beautiful, pl beautiful place to live, um, we're just expanding. We're buying some more land next to our farm and looking for people who would like to come and join us. And we're also developing a visitor program. So people who want, um, you know, one step up from, from being volunteers, you can come and live on our farm for a, a week or a month or whatever, experience our, our beautiful farm. And, and if you want, participate in, you know, learning to farm a little bit to whatever extent you want. And uh, we also have a pretty active community. So you can join the community to some extent if you want to, like for lunch or something like that. Beautiful. Yes. And I have been there. It is absolutely stunning. So thank you, Susan and Walter. And we want to hear much more from you. Um, in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and introduce Stephen Gomes, who uh, has his own story to tell about how Kinship Earth has come to be and how he uh, reconnected with Susan. So Stephen, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to you. Okay, great. Welcome everybody, all 31 of you that are here today. I'm actually here with George in uh, a beautiful site overlooking the Golden Gate Bridge and the entry to the bay. And it's such a wonderful uh, space to just commune with nature, uh, be in this wonderful air and be with wonderful George. It's nothing like being with George. Anyway, uh, we've been having fun, George and I and others. And um, I wanna say quickly that I first met Susan, uh, who is an early inspiration in my life. I first met her in 1988. And she was with a group of women presenting to, the, to one of the earliest meters, meetings of the Social Venture Network, which was a very one of the earliest ones right along with Terry Molner, who's here today, um, looking at how do you put uh, money and an investment for doing good on the planet. She was an early pioneer in that. And I happened to be at a pitch session where they were listening to different potential projects that, that these five guys would fund. And one of them was Artemis Joukowsky, who we still are working with today. He was his family uh, created the AIG uh, insurance organization. And so Artemis was there and these other guys, Josh Melman and others, they were there. And Susan and her gals gave different pitches and they got completely ignored. I couldn't believe it. I, I walked up to Artemis and I said, Artemis, they made, if I had some money right now, I would invest in their projects before I had invest in these guys' projects. And well, they said, yeah, you know, but these are women. Um, and the women are not credible in, in the finance world, you know, so we can't, we can't take a, it, it might, you know, hold us back. So we can't take that risk. So Susan got that message. And so she just jumped off with her gals and said, okay, if you're not going to let me play in your baseball game, I'm going to go create my own baseball game. And she did. And pretty soon hers, was 
going faster and farther than these guys. And when they saw that, they said, oh, we think we missed something. We better invite Susan back. And so she was the first woman in the social venture network. And, and you know, that started a whole story. But even before that, Susan was involved in uh, the Harris Bank, vice president in Chicago. She was breaking all kinds of rules and barriers at that time for all the other women uh, who followed her. And uh, for me, I looked at her and I go, wait, she's just following her dream. She's following her her bliss. She's following what she wants to do in life. Why can't I do that? And I was all into, you know, I got to be my corporate self at Bechtel Corporation and follow the mold and be a provider for my family. And, you know, I was like, I can't jump out of this mold and do that. But then I kept looking at her and we went to Crestone, Colorado together later and met uh, Maurice Strong, Strong, <coughs> Strong, who um, was the guy that with the United Nations that put together the environmental summit in Rio de Janeiro. And I kept watching her just walk her walk, you know, and fearlessly just walk her walk, you know, and I go, wait a second, if she can do it, then I got to be able to do it. And finally, I got up the nerve and jumped off the cliff and just hoped I would sprout wings. And I did. And, and I haven't looked back ever since. But at some point, I started trying to find her and she had disappeared. She totally disappeared off the face of the map. I couldn't find her anywhere. And I finally found her in South America of all places. And I, this is a long story I won't go into, but we went down there and visited her at Finca Sagrada. And basically we, we said, you know, Susan, what you created with all those 750 Kins alumni and the 40 plus networks all over the world, we have to continue this in some form. That legacy is too important and the world needs it now. So I came up with the name Kinship Birth and we set up a, an Oregon nonprofit corporation and this is our inaugural address. And I think I will stop right there and pass it back to you. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, so much backstory to share. Uh, I've got one fun picture. That's uh, Susan and Stephen at an event uh, back. Yeah, around, was around 1988, I think. Uh, part of part of Stephen's inspiration to uh, to take the leap into doing the kind of work that he's doing today. So. All right. So the next person I want to invite uh, introduce you to is George Orbelian. George is a lifelong surfer. This is a picture of him, and uh, he is all about living in flow. So, George, tell us about the infrastructure that you are building and what you see as the vision for uh, the next evolution of Kins Innovation Networks. Well, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for for being here today. And I want to welcome you to a very important collaboration that we're going to be embarking on together. And that is, we really are here to change the world. And I want to give you a little bit of context from Buckminster Fuller's last book, which is called The Grunch of Giants. And it really helped, this paragraph really helped put everything in perspective for me. So Bucky starts, before humans could be designed to occupy it, planet Earth had to be designed. Before planet Earth could be designed, the solar system had to be designed. Before the solar system could be designed, galaxies had to be designed. Before special case galaxies could be designed, special case macro micro universe, all its atoms and molecules, gravity and radiation had to be designed. Before any realizable designing was possible, it was cosmically necessary to discover and employ the full family of eternally coexistent and synergetically interaugmentative, only by mathematical equations expressible, intercovering generalized principles governing the generalized design of eternally regenerative scenario universe. And before all recognition of the eternal generalized principles and their inherent design science functions, it was further necessary to have the design of an eternally regenerative, radiationally expansive, and gravitationally contractive, everywhere and every when, 
complexedly intertransforming, non-simultaneously episoded scenario universe. The generalized design of galaxies, of entropic matter into energy as radiation exporting stars and generalized star systems, of planets centropically as radiation into matter importing planets. The design of planet Earth as the sun orbiting, biosphere protected, an oxygen atmosphere equipped incubator of DNA RNA design controlled biological life and of that life's photosynthetic conversion of entropic radiation into syntropic orderly hydrocarbon molecules and a vast variety of hydraulically compressioned, crystallinely trenchant, exquisitely structured biological species omni interregenerating as an ecological omni life and human thinking support system. And finally, the eternal mathematics, numbering and structuring, the eternally extensive mathematical spectrums, of frequency, wavelengths, and harmonic intervals. I share that because we are at the cusp together of this point of evolution. And it is critical that we take this responsibility and this opportunity to shift this planet because our biggest risk at this moment is to think too small. We can do this. We are here to do this. We have been evolved from billions of years of cosmic evolution to do this. And we're shifting this planet from a war world to a life world. And I thank you. Look forward to working together. Aloha. Thank you, George. That was awesome. And uh, yes, the vision and the people who are in this room have been doing this. And we have the relationships and we have the technology and we have the solutions to make that happen. So the next person that I want to introduce is Dr. Terry Molnar. Terry has just joined our advisory board, although we have been working with him uh, peripherally on multiple projects. We have some shared initiatives that we are eager to launch. I'm going to just highlight a couple of Terry's books. His most recent is The Sensation of Oneness. Cooperation for maturation, not competition, is the fundamental process in nature, and we can experience it as a sensation. So Terry, uh, I'd like to just allow you to say a couple of words about uh, your involvement in Kinship Earth before we move on and introduce Stuart. Uh, and you are muted, so I'm going to ask you to unmute and let me spotlight you. There we go. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, hello, everybody. I didn't know I was going to be invited to say anything today. But the, the thing I think I'll say is, first of all, I liked everything I just heard. It all resonates deeply with me. And the, the second thing I want to say is that I'm working with a number of the people in this phone call, Steve, Mark, you know, a number of folks on this phone call, Mitch, on a new kind of currency that could be a fantastic contribution to what we do. And the one thing I'm gonna say about it is that I now know why Bitcoin has not been found to be breaking any law in any nation on earth, any existing law. And it's because it exists purely in the agreement realm, not a material realm. And that is really phenomenal that a group of people all over the world can be operating something without being a part of any nation's laws. And that signals for us what we can do, we can create agreements and we can create agreements that work for everybody on earth. And so the group of us on this phone call that are working on uh, seeds currency are hoping to do that with the currency and having finance only get invested in from that system in uh, regenerative projects. So as, as, as Susan knows, I was back there in the earliest days of social responsible investing as well. And um, this is the next leg of maturation, as George was saying, the next leg, leg of the evolution is for us to be able to organize ourselves to work together without having to follow the current rules, but to create our own rules in a way that is in cahoots with the material world, but not stuck in it. So I won't say anything more than that, um, just as a, 
part of my inspiration with being excited about being a part of all this. Awesome. Thank you. We're so glad to have you on the team. And uh, Terry mentioned uh, the Seeds Regenerative Currency Initiative. Uh, we are doing an event. I'm going to announce that a little bit later on. I'll go through our upcoming events, but uh, that is coming up on May 16th. Uh, so now what I'd like to do is introduce Stuart Valentine, and he is our featured influencer today. We are all influencers here. Uh, Stuart has been an influencer in the realm of impact investing. He is the senior wealth manager and co-owner and co-founder of Centered Wealth, and he has played an active role in the positive impact investing movement since the year 2000. He is passionate about building the personal relationships and networks necessary to create meaningful systemic change in the world of finance towards a more sustainable, life-supporting investment model. From 2010 to 2014, Stewart served on the drafting committee of the Transforming Finance Group, founded by Hazel Henderson. He serves on the Research Advisory Board of Ethical Markets Media in the area of social venture capital and sustainable community development. Stewart authored an article series on socially responsible investing and its relationship to the hero's journey. In 2017, Stewart co-authored the book, Imagining Philanthropy for Life, a whole system strategy to transform finance and grow true wealth. He is often invited to speak nationally about the conscious investment process and mega trend drivers behind the growing green economy. Stuart is an active member of his community and serves as the board chair of the Sustainable Living Coalition, a nonprofit focused on facilitating community resources to optimize the conditions for growing sustainable communities. He is also the board president of the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust, SILT, dedicated to permanently protecting land to grow healthy food for generations to come. And since 2009, Stuart has been part of the adjunct faculty at Maharishi International University, teaching in the MBA and sustainable living departments on the theme of environmental, social, and governance analysis, impact investing, sustainable community development, and transformational entrepreneurship. Stewart's undergrad degree is in renewable energy systems with a minor in environmental design from the Ever Evergreen State College, and he completed his MBA at MIU in 1986. He lives with his wife, Ellen, on their pastoral homestead in Iowa. And without further ado, I would like to give a warm welcome to Stuart. And Stuart, if you would kick us off, please, with just a little bit about your uh, background and your involvement in uh, Kins. How did, how did your involvement in Kins come to be? And then give us an update on what you're doing now, please. Very good. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, so background on Kins, man, I think it's been my whole life was uh, sort of led me right to the doorstep of Esalon uh, in 2007 uh, with many co-influencers on this call. I mean, I think we ought to call it this the co-influencer series because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for many, many of you on this call. So I thank you all for your intellectual uh uh, brilliance and passion for this idea of transformation. Um, and I think, frankly, uh, in 2007, it was you, Hank Patton. You were the cause of me uh, showing up at uh, Esalon for those five days, thanks to Hazel Henderson, uh, uh, on the theme of intergenerational finance. And Frank, Frank Dixon was there. And guess who else was there? A certain person named Susan Davis. So that was the beginning of my journey into the Kins realm, uh, was meeting Susan over the, that period of time, exploring the dom domain of intergenerational finance. Remember Chief Seattle's you know, um, statement about uh, taking into consideration, all, all decisions today take into consideration the next seven generations. So um, that's how I arrived and in this community and, um, I, I think my, the element that is uh, something that I am personally very interested in, in cultivating here is 
a deepening understanding of the primacy of consciousness in informing our choices, both as individuals and as a community. And uh, it, it, I really noticed that uh, with Susan's principle about sitting at the table of unknowing and co-creating with spirit, God, nature, however you want to refer to it, uh, the evolutionary way forward. And uh, George, you mentioned uh, transformation from a war world into a life supporting world. I really do believe this is the challenge uh, of the time that we have to somehow outgrow the, the paradigm of what I call colonial command and control and move into uh, a cooperative, uh, co-creative um, cosmology of life. And so that's, uh, I get to play that theme out in my role as you know, a financial advisor um, and exploring how we can work with this system of economics, uh, this world, uh, this domain we call finance and the practice of investing, how can we actually start reclaiming uh, the force of life throughout those three domains? Because uh, we've created uh, an increasingly separate and um, contrary to life system of money. And unless we sort of reweave that back into uh, a biomimetic model, um, you know, nature will scrap this experiment, this human experiment and start another one. Uh, so I think it's our opportunity given the, the community that we are part of and the insights that we hold to explore every facet and practice that we can. And I just happen to exercise it through the domain of money and investment. but. As Hazel Henderson is fond of saying, and I truly believe this, this is a top to bottom redesign job and everyone uh, needs to be at the table of unknowing and exploring the possibilities for uh, reinvention uh, in support of life. So with that, I, I think I, what I can do is just share my journey and, and through a pictorial model that I've um, evolved and developed to help me know where I am on the roadmap that, of my own design. Uh, many of you have seen this, but for those who haven't, I'll do, just do a brief uh, run through of what I call the centered wealth tree, which um, is greatly influenced by my own experience as a long-term uh, practitioner of transcendental meditation and one who believes strongly in the, in the regular dynamic of transcendence. Uh, and also uh, woven into the principles of kins. So it's, um, it's a way that, again, it's really, frankly, it's, it's for others to understand what it is I am attempting to accomplish in my role as a financial advisor and investment manager. But uh, I often look at it just to say, okay, where am I in this map? <laughs> it's my roadmap, if you will. So Lauren, I have the image here. Do you want me just to share it? Uh, share yes, screen? you should be able to share screen freely. Thank there you. We go. All right. So this is the centered wealth tree model, um, which uh, really came out of spontaneous uh, experience. There's a great um, Vedic uh, saying, I don't know the actual original Sanskrit, but the translation is curving back on myself. I create again and again. And through the regular practice of meditation, you know, you have this opportunity to fall into this domain of transcendence, of silence, of settled awareness, and allow the intelligence of nature to flow. And it was actually at a three-day uh, symposium we held in Ojai, California. It was Hazel Henderson, Ronaldo Brutico, myself, who organized this new economy conference in 2009. And uh, was held up at the property at Meditation Mount in Ojai, which if, if any of you have not been to Meditation Mount in Ojai, I recommend you put it on your list. It is truly a, um, uh, a facility and a location that has deep resonance and wakes up creativity. Um, 
and it was a spontaneous uh, presentation. I, I began sketching this model out. But as you can see from the, the idea here is that it's a biomimetic model. That is, we are a function of nature's evolution here on this planet Earth. And so let's uh, be thinking about our money decisions, our economic system, our uh, system of finance in the context of natural systems. And that is the, uh, the job of the 21st century, is to reclaim uh, economics uh, as a natural system uh, compared to where we have arrived at today. And so the main theme here, of course, is just that consciousness is primary. Consciousness is infinite. Consciousness is embedded in our very uh, awareness. Uh, it is also the home of all the laws of nature and all intelligence flows in this field of consciousness of which we all share. We are all participants in this field of consciousness. And it's heartening for me because it reminds me that I am part of a universal field effect. And just as a grain of sand contributes to the beach, each one of us contributes to the wholeness of this universal field, this living system we call life. So it, that to me is engaging. I'm compelled by that. I want to participate and I want to bring all of myself into that uh, um, vision of possibility for life. And one thing that uh, is clear about life is every single life form goes through a process of emerging from this unmanifest field of consciousness. Blink, here comes a moment of conception. And in our case, a heart starts beating or a seed is germinates or whatever the transformational process uh, that brings that life form into being, that life form shares the same root as you and I. And again, this is a, kind of a way to remind ourselves of the unified field of consciousness out of which all life, all existence, all manifestation emerges. Well, from that celestial soup, we come down into planet Earth, a conception moment happens, a birth occurs, you and I emerge, and we're simply a bundle of emotion. Uh, through our uh, maturation, we go through the school of hard knocks, otherwise known as experiences, and we learn and grow and into the context of this moment here today. And in the context of the investment process, I really spend a lot of time uh, when a new client relationship comes on, uh, establishing the cosmology of consciousness first, a reminder that we are in service of life and this social invention we call money, which is a fabulous invention in my opinion. It's a wonderful way to uh, communicate and, and inform through the simple natural law of supply and demand. Uh, so there is, there is, in my view, a very important role uh, for money in this more beautiful world in our hearts we know is possible. Thank you, Charles Eisenstein. I love that quote. But the money has a role, and uh, we simply need to reassert through a, uh, an understanding of the cosmology of consciousness, uh, through our set of beliefs, thoughts, ethics, values, how to plan for and organize our financial circumstances um, into supporting the growing green economy, which is the canopy of this tree. And for simplicity's sake, I've simply highlighted some of the, the high points of what you might think of as the growing green economy. But as you can well imagine, using the tree as a metaphor, uh, the myriad uh, um, branches of human endeavor that are facilitated through money and investment. These are but just some high points we use in the public marketplace. We've gone from single bottom line thinking where profit first is the only consideration. 
In fact, famously, Milton Friedman in a Wall Street Journal editorial in 1971 famously wrote that the only social responsibility of a corporation is to make a financial return for its shareholder and nothing else. Well, that's a pretty radical, and yet it was embraced, adopted, and has been the source code driving uh, the debt-based capitalist model we live in. Well, thankfully, people like Susan Davis showed up in 1988 and Hazel Henderson even before that, and God knows people I don't even know who contributed to rethinking that very myopic uh, role of uh, investment and the role of the corporation to where today we sit within a rather robust robust emerging field of what is known as environmental, social, and governance screening, uh, where we actually look at, yes, the financial flows uh, of the co corporation, but we also are scoring and measuring very carefully now the environmental impact, the social impact, and the governance practices of that company. So we now have gone from the single bottom line to the triple bottom line. And you know, as in any new um, uh, paradigm, you follow that Gandhian sort of process, which is first, they ignore you. Second, they ridicule you. Third, they fight you. And fourth, they join you. Well, I would say in the 40 odd years, I've been watching the socially responsible evolution. And I think, Lisa, you're on the call, you would bear this out that We've seen all of those, haven't we? We've seen the, the ignoring, the ridiculing, the fighting. The fighting is still going on, by the way. But more and more, Wall Street is beginning to embrace. In fact, you don't hear the word socially responsible investing much anymore because Wall Street needed to rebrand it as their own. And their branding is ESG or environmental social governance investing. So that's all right, well and good. It's part of the transformational process. It's still in the early days where greenwashing is rampant. Let me tell you, I mean, I'm somewhat embarrassed even to be associated with the ESG community in some ways because I know how much of this segment of the market is being gamed uh, through kind of a greenwashing uh, kind of lens. But I also understand it that it's the process of change. And developing a theory of change for this community, I think, would be very important, uh, something that we could collectively put our attention on using some of that Buckminster Fuller uh, logic about understanding that change is not like a light switch on and off when it comes to human culture. It's an ongoing, ever-present hero's journey of engagement and transformation. And so I... I I find some comfort in that. I can relax and breathe a little bit, knowing that I am part of the process. All of us are part of the process. And when it comes to money, there is a really key choice. Is my money feeding the war world, as George uh, referred to it, or is my money uh, supporting the emerging life supporting context of triple bottom line? And I would even say, if we start understanding the role of consciousness and my intimate uh, communion within the field of consciousness, we have to actually go beyond triple bottom line and start thinking of quadruple bottom line, where it's a self-referral process about my contribution as an individual living being uh, communing with the intelligence of life. And my choices are in service of that evolutionary force of life, including my money and investments. So obviously we could spend a lot of time going into each of these branches. That's not the point of this right now, but you can get a sense of what the portfolios I work with might, with the flavor they might take on as we are searching for investments that meets the needs of the individual and, uh, and of life. Um, and in the book, which uh, the, the last real active kins group I was involved in was uh, uh, Susan had started it uh, one iteration before I joined was the, the concept was reimagining philanthropy. 
And it was out of that kin's group that the book, Imagining Philanthropy for Life, emerged. And I put philanthropy at the top of the tree to indicate kind of the capstone of the core uh, taproot, I think, that drives this universal evolution, which is the force of love. Uh, literally, the, um, uh, the love of humanity in the case of philanthropy. So to summarize this in, in a, the, the flow that I uh, attempt to generate in the relational dynamic uh, within the centered wealth uh, investment sphere is that to um, remind all of us that the most primary investment, the most important investment at this stage of human evolution is the investment of communion within yourself because it is through that uh, connection with the infinite wholeness of consciousness that right action and uh, the information and intelligence can find its way through your unique communication uh, amplifier uh, into the commitments that we make as a group, that is the kin's dynamic. Uh, we, I, I believe in this principle of birds, uh, of a feather flock together and each one of us through regularly cultivating communion within myself to the field of consciousness, emerging from that experience, spontaneously communicating the interest, the passion, the direction that this biological unit called Stuart is heading in, naturally through birds of a feather flock together, attracts like-minded beings and it is in that uh, commitment zone where the kin's dynamics and principles are so valuable that we generate community. And uh, where I think this uh, transformation with respect to economics and finance and investing needs to, to go is to uh, remind ourselves that the, the purpose, if you will, of investment is to support life and is to uh, lay the foundation and runway for ourselves and others into the fullness of wealth. And wealth is in the network of relationships that we build, not only within the human community, but within our consciousness uh, to the universal uh, field of life and to all life forms on this planet. That is the ultimate uh, source, course, and goal, if you will, of having this incredible opportunity of having a human body with its sensory apparatus. Uh, and this brief moment we have on this planet Earth is to lead life into a fuller expression of wealth. Uh, so that is the... That's the story I'm playing with. <laughs> and I look to all of you to help, uh, 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 help me uh, refine that and bring more color and scope and depth and breadth to it. Because I figure uh, we, we all get to play in this game up to the very last breath. So let's make the most of it. Thank you, Stuart. On behalf of Kinship Earth, all of our members and guests, we so appreciate your generosity. For more information about Stuart's work at Centered Wealth, please visit www.centered-wealth.com. This concludes part one of Kinship Earth Connections, April 16th, 2022. For a deeper dive into this topic, be sure to tune into our video part two, where you can join the conversation of influence. And to sign up for our upcoming events, please visit us at kinshipearth.org.